All praise is due to Allah, the most wise, the most aware, the most knowledgeable, and the most capable. Allah the Exalted stated, He promptly covers the light of the day with the darkness of the night and has subjected the sun, the moon, and the stars to His command. To Him alone belong all creation and command. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of all creation. Allah the Exalted further stated, That is Allah your Lord, none has the right. Create, therefore worship him alone he is in complete control of all affairs he sent down the Quran as an act of mercy to his creation and in order to rectify the ways Allah the Exalted stated this is a book whose ayahs have been perfected then further clarified by the one who is most wise and the most aware Indeed, this Qur'an guides to what is most upright and gives glad tidings to the people of Iman who perform righteous deeds. That for them alone will be a great reward. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone. And I further testify that Muhammad is his worshipping servant and messenger. As an act of kindness to his creation, Allah sent Muhammad wasallam to them as a caller to all that is beneficial and causes the mercy of Allah to descend upon them. In support of this, Allah stated, As for my mercy, it encompasses all things in this world. However, I will record my mercy in the hereafter for those who have taqwa, give zakah, and have iman in our signs. They are those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whose description they find written in the Torah and the Injil they possess. He instructs them to do what is right, forbids them from doing wrong, permits good lawful things for them, prohibits them from all that is detestable, and relieves them of the laws they were previously bound by. Therefore, it is only those who have Iman in him, honor him, support him, and follow the light sent down to him, who are truly successful. Say, O mankind, I am Allah's messenger to all of you. To him alone belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. None has the right to be worshipped except he who gives life and causes death. Therefore, have Iman in Allah and his messenger, the unlettered prophet who has Iman in Allah and his speech, and follow him so that you may be guided. Thus, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, his family, his companion, and his followers. To proceed, Allah the Exalted stated, O mankind, observe taqwa of your Lord, and fear a day when no parent can avail the child, or child can avail their parent in any way. The promise of Allah is undoubtedly true. Therefore, do not be deceived by the life of this world and do not let shaitan deceive you regarding Allah. Indeed, whoever is from the people of Taqwa is assured of a good ending and certain success in both this life and the hereafter. In support of this, Allah the Exalted stated, and Allah will deliver those who observe Taqwa to their place of ultimate success. No evil will touch them, nor will they grieve. Allah the Exalted further stated, whoever observes Taqwa of Allah, Allah will make a way out for them from every difficulty and grant them provision from where they never expect, expected. Whoever puts their trust in Allah, will find that he is sufficient. Whoever observes taqwa of Allah, Allah will grant him them ease in their affairs. Whoever observes taqwa of Allah, he will pardon their sins and grant them an immense reward. One of the obligatory acts of taqwa is for the servant to single out the Lord in worship alone. This means not directing any act of worship to other than him, the absolutely perfect. In support of this, Allah the Exalted stated, the command is only for Allah. He has commanded you to worship him alone. That is the true upright religion, even though most people are, are, are unaware. Allah the Exalted further stated, O mankind, worship your Lord, who created you and those before you, so that you may attain taqwa. This is the meaning of the testimony of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, which is the symbol of Islam and the cause of salvation. Allah the Exalted stated, And your deity is one deity. None has the right to be worshipped except Him, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. 
Allah the Exalted further stated, He is the one who forms you in the wombs however he wills. None has the right to be worshipped except him, the Almighty and the Most Wise. Alongside the testimony of Tawheed is the testimony of messengership, that Muhammad is truly the messenger of Allah. In support of this, Allah the Exalted stated, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. However, he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah is always in complete knowledge of all things. These two testimonies form the first pillar of Islam. The second pillar of Islam is establishing the prayer. In support of this, Allah said, and establish the prayer as prescribed. For indeed, the prayer prevents immorality and wrongdoing. And the remembrance of Allah is greatest. Allah has complete knowledge of all what you do. The third pillar is giving zakah. As Allah stated, take a portion of their wealth for charity which will cleanse and purify them of their sins and supplicate for them. As indeed, your supplication is a source of mercy and tranquility for them. Uh, the fourth pillar is fasting the month of Ramadan. In support of this, the exalted stated, the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Quran was sent down as guidance for mankind and as clear evidences that show the correct path and distinguish between right and wrong. Therefore, whoever witnesses the month among you must fast it. The fifth and final pillar is to perform Hajj to the sacred house of Allah for those who are able to find the means. In support of this, Allah said, and perform, proclaim Hajj to mankind. When you do so, they will come to you on foot and on every lean camel, coming from every distant route. They will come so that they may witness things of benefit to them. In confirmation of this, the Prophet ﷺ stated, Islam is to testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, to establish the prayer, give zakah, fast the month of Ramadan, and to perform hajj to the sacred house, if you are able to find the means. Iman is to have Iman in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the final day, and to have Iman in Allah's decree, both the good and the bad of it. Ihsan is to worship Allah as if you can see him, and although you cannot see him, him, he can certainly see you. O oh, people of Iman, this is the religion and legislation of Allah which He is pleased with for His creation. Through it, He has bestowed His mercy upon them by legislating that which brings them all forms of goodness and benefits, whilst averting from them all forms of harm and evil. For this reason, the following ayah was revealed to the Prophet, may Allah salah and salam be upon him on the day of Arafah. Today, I have perfected for you your religion, complete, completed my favor upon you, and I am pleased with Islam as a religion of you. Allah describes his prophet, may Allah salah and salam be upon him with his statement, and we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the creation. From these clear principles, the blessed sharia ah has come to attain benefits and maximize them, whilst preventing harm and minimizing them. It has determined that preventing harm takes precedence over attaining benefits. Additionally, he has come to achieve the highest benefits, even if it means foregoing lesser, lesser ones, and to commit the lesser of two evils to avoid the greater one. When faced with a conflict, the higher benefit is chosen and the lesser harm is preferred. The Sharia has also emphasized that harm should be eliminated without causing further harm. As in the hadith, there should be neither harm nor inflicting harm in return. Hence, harm should be avoided as much as possible. To this end, the Sharia has enjoined everything that leads to growth and a prosperous life. And it has prohibited inflicting harm upon others. It commands justice, virtuous morals, being dutiful to one's parents maintaining family ties, truthfulness in speech, and protecting rights by handing it over to the rightful owners. He also mandates fulfilling trusts, honoring contracts and covenants, and obedience to those in authority. In support of this, Allah the Exalted stated, indeed Allah commands justice, good conduct, and giving to relatives, and forbids immorality, bad conduct, and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded and fulfill the covenant of Allah when you have taken it and do not break oaths after the confirmation while you have made Allah a witness over you indeed Allah knows what you do he the absolutely perfect further stated indeed Allah commands you to render trust to whom they are due 
And when you judge between people to judge with justice, excellent is that which Allah instructs you. Indeed, Allah is ever hearing and seeing. Oh, you have Iman, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those in authority among you. And if you disagree over anything, refer it to Allah and the Messenger. If you should have Iman in Allah and the last day, that is the best way and the best in result. The Sharia has emphasized the obligation of preserving the five necessities, which are unanimously agreed upon by all of Allah's legislations. The preservation of religion, life, intellect, wealth, and honor. The Sharia considers any violation of these necessities a crime that warrants punishment. Thus, preserving these necessities is from the causes for entering paradise and attaining the pleasure of Allah. The immensely, the immensely merciful, as well as being a cause for stability, happiness, advancement, and civiliz civilization in this world. Without them, life becomes imbalanced and the violation leads to punishment in the hereafter. This is why the farewell sermon of the Prophet, may Allah salah and salam be upon him during Hajj, was indeed your blood, your wealth, and your honor are sacred to you, like the sanctity of this day of yours, in this city of yours, in this month of yours. Religion is a necessity, as humans cannot do without obedience to the Lord and worshipping Him, for which they were created. Allah the Exalted said, and I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. He the Absolutely Perfect also said, say, my Lord has commanded justice and that you maintain your selves in worship of him at every place of worship and invoke him sincere to him in religion just as he originated you you will return and he said and we certainly sent to every nation a messenger saying worship allah and avoid taghut and among them were those whom allah guided and among them were those upon whom error was deservedly decreed so proceed through the earth and observe how the end of the deniers was Allah the Exalted also said, said, affirming the necessity of preserving life and forbidding, forbidding the evil, for, for, forbidding the unjust taking of life, and do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden, except by right. And he also said, and do not kill yourselves or one another. Indeed, Allah is to you ever merciful, and whoever does that is in aggression and injustice, then we will drive him into a fire and that for Allah is always easy. He the absolutely perfect also said affirming the necessity of preserving wealth. O you have O you who have Iman, do not consume one another's wealth unjustly, but only in lawful business by mutual consent. Regarding the, the necessity of preserving intellect, he the exalted said, O you have Iman, indeed intoxicants, gambling, sacrificing on stone altars, and divining arrows are but evil from the work of shaitan. So avoid it that you may be successful. Shaitan only wants to cause between you animosity and hatred through intoxicants and gambling and to avert, avert you from the remembrance of Allah and from prayer, so you will not abstain. The texts of the Quran and Sunnah have also prohibited attacking people's honor. Allah the Exalted said, and those who harm the men and women of Iman for something other than what they have earned have certainly borne upon themselves a slander and manifest sin. He, the absolutely perfect, also said, Indeed, those who falsely accuse, chaste, and unaware women of Iman are cursed in this world and the hereafter, and they will have a great punishment. He, the majestic and exalted, further stated, O oh, you have Iman, do not let a people ridicule and another people. Perhaps they may be better than them. Nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult one another and do not call each other by offensive nicknames. Wretched is the name of disobedience after one's Iman. And whoever does not repent, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. Or you have Iman, avoid much negative assumption. Indeed, some assumption is sin. And do not spy or backbite on one another. 
Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when dead? You would detest it. And observe taqwa of Allah. Indeed, Allah is ever ex ex accepting of repentance and ever merciful. That which complements this is that, me that means that have the same rulings as the goals. That which is necessary to complete a command is itself commanded with. And that which is necessary to fulfill an obligation is self-obligatory. Therefore, whatever means lead to the preservation of the objectives of Islam are themselves command commanded with Islam. Since the objective and necessary uh, of benefits cannot be achieved except by causes and paths leading to them, their paths and causes follow, follow them in their rulings. Therefore, every person of Iman must strive to protect the five necessities that lead to the well-being of creation the stability of life, the spread of security, and enable them to achieve their religious and worldly interests. One must also cooperate with others in this, seeking to draw closer to Allah by doing so and hoping for his reward in the hereafter. Every Muslim should prevent wrongdoers from attempting to influence the objecti objectives of Islam in protecting these necessities. We all have a responsibility towards this, each according to their responsibility, work and position. We must all nurture our souls and in particular the souls of the younger generation to respect these necessities. While, while it is obligatory to, to protect these five necessities in every place and time, the obligation becomes even more emphasized in these noble sites. As Allah the Exalted states, whoever intends to deviate from the truth by doing injustice while within it, we will make them taste from a painful torment. During Hajj, there is a manifestation of the rights of worship that are de defining marks of Allah's religion as well sincerity in worshipping Allah. It is not a place for political slogans or partisanship. It is incumbent upon pilgrims to adhere to the regulations and instructions that ensure the safe and tranquil performance of their rights and defining marks of Hajj. Hajj pilgrims to Allah's sacred house. You are in Arafah, in a grand, in a grand position where Allah boasts of you to His angels. This is an honourable place and a virtuous time where good deeds are multiplied, sins are forgiven, and ranks are elevated. Show Allah your adherence to Sunnah. Emulate the noble Prophet may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, who delivered a sermon at this very site. Then ordered Bilal to call the adhan and give the iqama. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed two rakats of dhuhr. Then Bilal gave the iqama, and the Prophet may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him prayed two rakats of asr, combining and shortening the two prayers. He then re remained on this on his camel, remembering Allah and supplicating him until the sunset. After that, he went to Muzdalifa, advising his companions to observe tranquility, dignity and gentleness. He prayed three rakats of Maghrib and two rakat of Isha, combined at Muzdalifa and slept there until he got up to pray Fajr. He then supplicated until the sky became bright and headed towards Mina, where he threw seven pebbles at Jamarat al-Aqaba, offered his sacrifice, shaved his head, performed Tawaf al ifada around the Kaaba, and then returned to Mina. He remained in Mina during the days of Tashriq, frequently remembering Allah by saying Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, and La ilaha illallah. He stoned the three Jamarat with pebbles every day after Zawal and supplicated after stoning the small and middle Jamarat. He gave concessions for those with valid excuses so that they would not have to spend their nights in Mina. The Sunnah of Messenger of Allah, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, is to stay in Mina until the 13th of Dhul Hijjah and it is preferable to do so. However, however, he he permitted leaving early on the 12th. When he, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, completed his, his Hajj intended to travel, he performed Tawaf around the noble Kaaba. Hajj pilgrims to Allah's sacred house. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, was present in Arafah without fasting to assist him in remembering Allah and supplicating him. He, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him, was present in Arafah, remembering Allah and supplica supplicating him. Therefore, 
emulate him, may Allah Salah and Salam be upon him. As Allah stated, call upon your Lord in private and with full humility. He certainly does not love those who violate the bounds of he has set. Allah also stated, call upon Allah with fear and hope. Indeed, Allah's mercy is near to those who have ihsan. Supplicate Allah for yourselves. Your parents and those related to you, whoever, whoever prays for his brother in his absence, the appointed angels say, Amin, and may Allah grant you the same. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Palestine who have been afflicted with harm and suffered pain due to their enemies, enemies who spill blood, cause corruption in the land and prevent the provisions they need such as food, medicine, nourishment and clothing. Among those who most deserve our supplications are those who perform good deeds and carry out acts of ihsan, including those who serve their two holy mosques and strive for the comfort of the guests of Ar-Rahman. Foremost among them is the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdul Aziz and his crown prince. O oh Allah, the ever-living, the self-sufficient, sustainer of all, the owner of all majesty and honor, we ask you by your bounty and kindness to guide the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn, ibn Abdul Aziz in his, uh, and his crown prince, Prince Muhammad ibn Salman, to all that is good. O oh Allah, aid and support them. O oh Allah, reward them with the best of rewards for the great efforts they have made and continue to make for Islam and Muslims. O oh Allah, magnify and increase the rewards and be pleased with them. O oh Allah, accept the Hajj of the Hajj pilgrims, make their affairs easy and return them to the countries safe and sound. Return them having forgiven the sins, accepted their repentance and fulfilled their needs. O oh Allah, forgive the Muslim men and women and the men and women of Iman. Protect them from all, all evil. Preserve for them their religion, their safety, their lives, their wealth, their minds and their honor. Grant them all types of benefits and goodness and ward off from them all types of evil and misdeeds. O oh Allah, rectify their hearts. Grant them safety in their countries, satisfy their hunger, bless them in their provisions, and take care of all of their affairs. O oh Allah, rectify their hearts, grant them safety in their countries, satisfy their hunger, bless them in their provisions. And take care of all the affairs. Your Lord, the Lord of all might, is absolutely perfect, exalted above every falsehood people may ascribe to him. He grants protection to all of his messengers, and all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all creation.